Frank, give us an eye update. Frank, give us an eye update. Frank, give us an eye update. My eyes are fucking crooked. What what do you, what am I supposed to say? <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. Um so let me actually put my phone down somewhere because this is gonna be a little bit of an explanation, but long story short, it's almost two in the morning. We have a uh 5.45 a.m. check-in at New York Eye and Ear for surgery to correct my cross eyes. Uh, going back a little bit, about a month and a half after the surgery, I was kind of like sketched out. I mean, you guys noticed I was kind of cross-eyed. I was worried it wasn't going to fix itself, although I was optimistic. Um, I started scheduling appointments to see other doctors, and uh, New York Eye and Ear is kind of like the, the most famous, well-known, uh, for the best doctors, uh, in New York, especially maybe even in the whole U S I'm not too sure about that, but, uh, that's where my health insurance is. And that's close to me. And that makes the most sense out of everything. So went to see a few different optometrists and they basically told me I had strabismus, which is a misalignment of the eyes, which is caused by like a muscle imbalance. Cause there's, there's four muscles basically, well, I'm not sure on that, but uh, I think there's like four muscle areas that attach the eye, uh, top, bottom, left, and right. And if if one is tighter than the other or one is looser than the other, it can cause the eyes to be crossed in certain directions. Um, I hope the lighting's okay, but I don't really care. Uh, so it could be up, down, left, right. And for me, it's weird because after that surgery, both of my eyes are pointing inward. So whatever the plastic surgeon did caused both of my eyes to point inward. And after I went to uh, the New York doctors and they confirmed the had strabismus, I asked those New York doctors, hey, have, how often have you seen this after orbital decompression? They said it was very rare. So then after speaking to them, I had my follow-up consultation with the plastic surgeon. So just to get the timeline correct, you know, a month and a half, I'm like, okay, maybe something's wrong here. So, and then at the two month point, I was seeing the New York doctors. And then I had my follow-up with the plastic surgeon at three months. So I didn't like schedule anything or, or, or want to get any surgeries because at that two month point, the New York doctor basically told me I had to get surgery to fix it. Um, Cause it, it was severe enough that it was not going to correct itself. Um, but I said, okay, hold on, let's wait, let's see what the plastic surgeon says, hopefully something optimistic, and he basically told me that he never saw this happen before in both eyes. Uh, he did say that he has had patients that have had issues in one eye. He has had patients that had to get uh, strabismus surgery in one eye, but not like this. And from what I looked up, if people get orbital decompression, there's a 15% chance of a misalignment. He was giving me statistics saying there's a 3% chance. Now, he never told me I would be cross-eyed. He told me I had a chance of double vision. He did not mention that I would also be cross-eyed, which you know might have deterred me from getting the surgery. But I'm assuming what he was saying was in 3% of his procedures, that was his personal um, I guess you would say success or failure rate with patients having issues with eye misalignment, which compared to medical literature that I've read, the medical literature was much higher. But the thing is, if he's telling me 3% of his cases had misalignment in one eye, you know, what's 3% of 3%? I, I did the math once. It's some, I, I, I don't remember exactly, but it's something crazy. It's like, it's like 0.1% chance that both of my eyes would have been misaligned, which I, I mean, I kind of believe him if he's telling me it's never happened before, because statistically speaking, I mean, even a 15% chance of 15% or 10% of 10%, it, it's very, very low. But, you know, to get to get the short end of the stick, it's very, it seems to be very, very unlucky. So um, it, it wasn't helpful because he basically said he never saw it before. And, and now I got to go to these other surgeons to try to correct the issue. Um, so, you know, I'm not too happy about it. You know, I, I was telling myself, you know, this plastic surgery I got in uh, California a few months ago was going to be the last plastic surgery I would ever get in my life. And here I am waking up at 2 a.m. to get a taxi to New York to go get this 
with the surgery. So I'm, I'm not happy about this. Hopefully it's just this one surgery and then it's fixed and I never have to go under anesthesia again in my life. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the eye update, I guess. So we're going to get him fixed. Uh, he's supposed to do, he said one, he said doing, uh, fixing one eye has a 90% chance of fixing both of them. So hopefully that's the truth. Hopefully it's not some weird thing where the misalignment was caused surgically and both of them have to be corrected surgically. I hope that's not the case. I have a feeling it might be because, you know, I mean, after that procedure, uh, after that procedure, both of them were misaligned. And uh, I, I, I have a bad memory, but I think it's called esotropia, where the eyes point inward. And exotropia is when the eyes point outward. Uh, some of you guys are suggesting, oh, you could fix it with exercises. People have fixed lazy eyes with exercises. Esotropia, where the eyes point inward, it's, it's the one where it can't really get fixed with eye exercises. The others have seen some success, uh, but especially both eyes. If one eye was off, then you could cover it, the other eye, and strengthen the eye. But the problem is, if both eyes are pointing inward, the only way to really strengthen them is to cover one and get it to focus. But if you cover one, you know, one eye gets better and the other stays bad and it never, it never gets fixed. It, the sur surgery is basically the only option or uh, hope, hoping it gets better on its own. I don't, I have not seen any evidence whatsoever that esotropia can be fixed on its own. Um, and uh, more importantly, everything passed about three feet in front of me, I see two of, which is not easy. It's, my, my vision is very messed up. Um, it, it's very difficult to drive. It's, you know, I get, it, it's confusing. It's hard to do, even just my day-to-day -day tasks. And I definitely don't like, look, I don't, I, I don't make con eye contact with people anymore because I know my eyes are fucked. Or I don't like making eye contact with people anymore. Uh, so hopefully we go, we get a fix today. It's a very, I'm not too upset about it because it's it's not a crazy procedure. It has a very high success rate. It can be done again. You know, it's nothing insane. It's not the you know, it's not a crazy insane thing to get done. Uh, so that's enough yapping. Uh, it's a few hour drive to New York, then probably a few hours in the hospital, and then a few hour drive back home. Hopefully, nice, quick, and easy in and out. And hopefully, <laughs> the one thing I'm worried about if if this is it, I'll be happy. If I got to get the other eye done too, it's I don't know. I, I'll be I'll be a little upset if I got to do another because. Surgery is a big deal. Okay? You gotta, you gotta get, uh, you gotta see the doctor. You gotta get pre-surgical screening. You guys, because it's a big deal. It's not, it's not easy. Um, but anyway, let's. I uh, gotta get ready to go. So maybe we'll update you guys in the hospital. All right, guys. The, uh, the drive-in was a nightmare. I'll save that story for later. But we're chilling in the hospital bed. It's like six forty-five. So. Surgery is supposed to be 7.30. I don't have clothing on, but I got the head net on for now, so I'm feeling okay. <laughs> oh. Thank fucking Christ. That was a fucking nightmare. And not the surgery, guys. <laughs> the taxi. Holy fuck. W worse. Uh, I, I've never thought I was going to die so certainly in my life. But we'll save that story after the eye update. Uh, so I just got home from the surgery. Uh, let me get inside so you guys can see a little better. It's about 2 p.m. Should have been home at 1 p.m., but well, and that explanation is part of the taxi story. Uh, my eyes are like really dry, a little irritated. I'm blinking a lot. I'm definitely gonna go try to lay down after I eat something. Uh, just hopefully the irritation goes away. Um, so, I think you guys can kind of tell, operating on my right eye, my right eye is straight, I think, a little swollen, but right eye is straight, and uh, left eye is uh, 
is not the one they operated on. Oh, this looks kind of funky, man. Is it just swollen? Yeah, I think it's just swollen. I think it's a little swollen, but um, so what's gonna happen is, I'm just going over here, look in the mirror real quick. What's gonna happen is now that the right eye is straight and more importantly, I can see straight, I don't have double vision anymore. The, um, the left eye should correct itself over the next three weeks and both of my eyes should be straight. Uh, so this is definitely not an indicator of what it's gonna look like. We'll wait two or three weeks. I trust this doctor more than the previous one and um, it should be good. So uh, we got to the got to the city too early at 4.45 uh, cause I accidentally told the taxi driver an hour too early. And um, so I hung out in the car for an hour we got in the, the we got in the hospital 5:45 a.m. at our check-in time. Uh, it took them about 15 minutes to get me upstairs, uh, answer some questions for the nurse. Uh, was basically suited up in the hospital gown by 6:30, and then uh, hung around for about an hour. A few doctors and nurses talked to me in between, but it was mostly me, me, uh, me, uh, me sitting in the bed for about an hour. And then um, doctor came, talked to me, and then wheeled me into uh, wheeled me into the surgery room. And I was basically out. Uh, I was out like a light within maybe five minutes. And then uh, woke up about nine thirty. Came to my godforsaken taxi driver was there to pick me up. And then um, then we came back. So surgery went well. He operated, as I said, just on the right eye. I can fucking see now. I can see, yeah. So before, for the past four months, everything I saw was double. Now, still, still slight focusing issues, which is fine. It's going to fix itself. But now I can see normally, which is, you know, which is good. So... Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how the next few weeks is going to go. I'm not, I'm not going to wait until like, uh, the appointment next week, or I'm not going to wait. Uh, I'm really congested probably cause, uh, I was in the hospital. I need to do an eye eye rinse, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to post this just so you guys know, you guys have been asking me and then we'll do another update in a month. So we have the initial update. Everything went well. We're just waiting for the left eye to correct itself now. And um, so then we'll do that update like three or four weeks from now. Kind of final surgery update. Hopefully it's good. I, I mean, I think it's gonna. He said there's a 90% chance I won't have to get the other eye done, which I'm hoping for. But honestly, it wasn't that bad. I wouldn't mind if I really had to absolutely get another procedure. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, you guys can look up strabismus surgery if you want to know more about that. Am I, was I blocking my camera? I hope not. Yeah, if you guys want to look up strabismus surgery, you guys can look more about that. They basically, they hold the eye open, they turn the eye, they, they make an incision, and they, they cut the muscle and they put move the muscle back so that the eye can move. But no, my eyes are, my eyes are definitely very irritated and dry right now. Uh, um, God forbid they give me some fucking Oxycontin so I can sleep, right? I'll make, I'll make a whole fucking separate video on the painkillers, dude. It's fucking ridiculous. Alright. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to touch on the eye surgery. But, uh, hopefully that's the last surgery I have to get in my life. Okay, so let's talk about this fucking taxi horror story, dude. This is fucking insane. What topped it off, dude, was what the worst chargeback ever, dude. Nine hundred. I as soon as I got out of the fucking surgery room into the into the taxi, saw my emails. Fucking nine hundred dollar chargeback. Fucking bank sided with the customer, dude. I'm about to some fucking cocksucker in in like Morningside Heights. His name is Justin. I'm. I, was, I swear to fucking God, I will get my nine hundred dollars back. I swear to fucking God, I can't. 
that 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 was the that was the icing that that made it fucking worse. I was like, that happening was like, all right, I'm definitely telling this taxi story. I'm definitely fucking telling it. So let's let's sit down for this one. This was fucking horrendous. All right, so I call this taxi guy up last week. He says he could do it for seven fifty. Take me to uh, take me to New York. Wait for me for my surgery. Sign me out of the hospital and take me back. Now seven hundred fifty dollars. The the Uber each way would probably be two fifty. And then I was like, two hundred fifty dollars for him sitting there and signing me out. I probably spend more on a nurse service. So I thought it was a good deal, but. I did have a friend over here. I might have been able to. I don't know if my friend was available, but I might have been able to ask my friend to drive me. I'm sure he would have done it for five or six hundred bucks. So I could have saved a few hundred dollars on on using my friend. A few hundred dollars, not that big of a deal to me, guys. As you know, I'm losing thousands of dollars a week in fucking chargeback. So whether I save three hundred dollars on a cab ride or not is pretty insignificant, dude. It's pretty insignificant. So, cab driver shows up to my place, two in the morning, and uh, it's an older, it's an old guy, not older guy, the guy's fucking 80 or 85, I don't know, if I had to place a bet, probably 80, uh, but completely white hair, old guy, old guy, driving a fucking, uh, I don't know, a 20-year-old Ford car, like, not a small sedan, not a safe car to be driving, really. Um, and it's it's pitch black. It's 2 a.m. So this guy's driving about about half a mile down the road from my house. Keep in mind, this is a two-hour and 45-minute drive. Half a mile down the road from my house. I thought we were almost getting an accident. Guy swerves, hits some branches on the road. I was like, is this what, is this what I'm in for, dude? Uh, we keep driving. Get on the highway. Uh, almost get killed again. Uh, there was a construction area. And the guy didn't see that the construction area was still going. And he like... He smashed his tires on the... On these big rubber bumpers on the road. I thought I, I thought he hit something bad. I thought he, he misaligned his tires. He was going to have to stop the car. Then, about 20 minutes after that... <laughs> um... Guy, guy was about to try to cut, he was, this guy kept speeding up to pass all these trucks. But he's driving this rinky-dink Ford in the middle of the night, pitch black. He's going fucking 80, 90 to pass these trailers. Car's shaking like crazy. Car needed a wheel alignment and two new struts, 100%. Car's shaking like fucking crazy. This guy's nuts, speeding up to 80, 90 to pass these trailers. I explained to him, look, we're not in a rush. We're going to be way too early. Take your time. I said it like three times. So then there's a merge sign. Not a merge sign. Um, uh, it might be called a merge sign. It's where the two lanes combine. And he's trying to. He's about to try to pass this trailer when the two lanes are combined. I say, whoa, 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 stop. And I said, tell the guy to stop because um, I thought I was going to get killed. I thought he was about to drive into the guardrail. So... Those were three near-death incidents within the first 30 minutes of driving. And I was like, holy fuck, I bet you... <laughs> I was like... after Guys, I'm not telling the story yet, but... God wants me here to help people. That's all I have to fucking say. If I lived through this fucking taxi driver, nothing's gonna fucking kill me at this point, bro. Nothing. Holy fuck. So anyway, after that incident, then again... It's fucking pitch black, 2 a.m., old guy, he's flashing his brights on and off, guy's going fucking 70, 80, which, I'd probably be driving that fast in my car, but this car is older, it's fucking shaking like crazy, this guy's fucking old, he doesn't have a GPS mount, he's looking down at his phone, and guys, by the way, this is a professional taxi company, and this is their company vehicle, so... I need some water. Hold on. Ran out of ran out of Mountain Valley. I got this Romanian water. I actually had it. It's weird. I had a dream about a mini vampire after I drank this. No lie. But I'll save that story for another video. So this guy's just going too fucking fast. 
Like, like I understand why this guy, this guy keeps going 70, 80. I told him a few times. I didn't want to like backseat drive him. And I told him already. I told him three fucking times. Hey, take your time. We're going to be really early. But he, I was, he, I was just nervous the whole fucking ride there, dude. And then what was the funny, I was fucking laughing. I was fucking dying, dude. We, he, he stopped, we stopped at a rest stop in Jersey, but it's like the beginning of Jersey. So we're like maybe halfway into, halfway to New York, not even. We go to, pull to a rest stop. I get out of the back of the car. I just start peeing in the, in the parking lot because that's what I do. Sometimes I have some bladder issues. I just, I just open my car door. I pee out the car. I get back in the car. He, he was walking over into the rest stop. I'm guessing to use the bathroom or something, but he saw it was closed. So then I see this guy walking over, and it's like a, a little pit. It's like a... He he was walking towards the building, and to the right of the building in the front was like a little a little circular pit where, like, maybe you sit, you see a park that has, like, concrete stairs and stuff you can go in and sit down in. Guy fucking... <laughs> I couldn't believe if what I was seeing was real. Guy fucking flew into the pit. He fucking flew. He like, he did like a fucking barrel roll into the pit. And I was looking, I took a double take. I was, because I still have, I still have double vision, right? At the, I still have double vision before the surgery. So I was like, what the fuck am I looking at? Is that the same guy that just fucking got out of the car with me and was driving me? Is he fucking dead? Is he going to get back up? 80 year old guy. 80 year old fucking guy. He walks fucking, literally fucking flew. No joke, like at least fucking five or six feet, like in the air, <laughs> and he fucking rolled, and I couldn't look, I just turned around, and I was like, holy fuck, I'm gonna die today, I'm gonna fucking die today, holy fuck, I didn't know what to do, I was like, am I gonna have to fucking call an Uber to find me at this fucking rest stop to take me to New York, because I had the surgery time, guy comes back to the fucking car, <laughs> He, he was smoking a cigarette. That's why he was walking to the pit. To smoke a cigarette. Guy walks back to the fucking car. He was like, oh, did you see that? And I was like, no, no. I was looking the other way. Because I was like, holy fuck. I thought the guy was going to die. I'm not telling him I fucking saw it. Uh, and he was like, oh, I took a tumble. I was like, yeah, you all right? You okay? He's like, yeah, yeah. I didn't see the stairs. <laughs> and I was like, bro, no fucking shit. You didn't see the fucking cliff you jumped off of? Holy fuck. This is fucking nuts. This is the craziest fucking shit I've ever seen in my life. I'm going to fucking die tonight. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Okay, so. So. We get back in the car. And then I'm trying to like close my... I didn't sleep it all the night before. I was fucking up myself in the routine as usual. But. So I was trying to get some sleep in the car. But I was so fucking nervous. I kept opening my eyes and looking and seeing how fast this guy was going. And it was just, dude, he was just going too fucking fast. There was, no, he, if he could have just gone 55, he, he was going 55, 60 most of the time. But there were parts where he was fucking speeding up. And anytime you go over 60 in that fucking car, dude, it, I, it's fucking dangerous. It's like trying to fucking, two, you're driving basically a fucking year 2000 Toyota Corolla. So... Holy fuck. And he fucking Xanax and fucking 5 oxycodone after that fucking shit. Holy fuck. Guys, day went amazing. Surgery went amazing. This fucking taxi drive almost gave me a fucking stroke. Holy fuck. Okay. So. Yeah, then on, on and off, him going a little too fast. We finally get close. And as we get closer to the city... Thankfully, in Jersey, there's more fucking cars on the road, so this lunatic stopped going fucking 90 in this shitbox. So now that there's more cars on the road, he can't just fucking... <laughs> like... So thankfully, as we got closer to the city, when there were more cars, um, it, it, was, it was a little safer drive. So then, we get into Manhattan, we get into the city, we drive through the city. That wasn't that bad, because, uh, you know, you can't, you can't, you can only drive so fast in the city. Uh, we get there early, he goes to IHOP, I chill in the car for an hour, and then I check into the hospital. Then, when I woke up after surgery, 
he w he was waiting there. He already had me basically signed out, and we basically immediately left. Now my eyes, right when I got out of surgery, my vision was too blurry. I could not see. Now I can kind of see. It's okay, but my vision was too blurry because of something they put on my eyes right out of surgery. Uh, so I was kind of like hobbling around. I couldn't really see. I couldn't really see how this guy was driving or where he was going. But it was day. Now it's daytime, right? Now it's daytime. So I was, cause I was thinking, I was like, you know what? If I don't fucking die on the way to the hospital, it was meant to fucking be. This guy's gonna fix my eyes. That's the way I felt about it. And I was like, you know, it, all right. So if we make it to the hospital, it's gonna be daytime on the way back. So even if this guy drives like the complete unhinged lunatic that he is, bro. I don't know why I'm so congested. It must be something that hospital air and the New York air. My nasal cavity is completely clogged. Uh, uh, so yeah, I figure daytime is going to be a lot safer because the guy could fucking see better. But he was, he, I was still uncomfortable with how he was driving. He was still going a little fast. 70, 80 in that car is not safe. I was getting motion sickness. He was like, because when you go 70, 80 in a car like that, even if the highway's a little curved, it's like, <gasps> thankfully, uh, I made him stop like six times because I had to use the bathroom, so I had some fucking breaks. Um, and again, because, because my vision was foggy, I couldn't really see her, and I was a little out of it, I couldn't really see her or worry about the driving too much. But about two hours into the trip, it's supposed to be a two and a half hour drive, two hour and 15 minute drive. So about two hours into the trip, I check my GPS and it says an hour and a half. I'm like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And he he missed. He missed like two fucking exits. And I had to start giving him directions. So instead of getting home at like 1230, we got home at two. So I wasn't happy about that hour and a half extra. And then, um, yeah, top, I mean, to top it off, my eyes were so fucking irritated from the heat in the car and the wind, I just wanted to get the fuck home. I ran out of eye drops in the car. Stopped by the fucking gas station, got a bottle of Fiji water. I was pouring Fiji water in my eyes. My eyes were so irritated, I thought I got something in them, but I didn't. And then, um, uh, then we finally got fucking home. And this guy didn't give me a fucking discount. And as much as I would expose and trash talk the company, I think they're out of fucking business anyway. I don't think they do any taxi service, so there's no fucking point in even naming them, but... Holy fuck. What a fucking nightmare, dude. What a fucking nightmare. I had a hunch yesterday. I was like, the way the taxi guy talked to me on the phone, I was like, you know what, let me just ask my friend first. But then the taxi guy called me back and said he could do it. I was like, okay. And the, the main reason I went with the taxi is because I didn't want my my guys and my employees and my friend to worry that I was getting surgery. That was the main reason I didn't, I, that was the main reason I went with a taxi. I was like, it's anonymous. They're not going to worry about me or anything. So that's, that's why I wanted to do it. But in hindsight, holy fuck. I lost 10 years off my fucking life today, dude. Holy fuck. What the fuck? Yeah, I drank this Romanian water. And I had a weird dream that this tiny little Romanian vampire was trying to kill me, but he was made out of ceramic. So I grabbed him and I took a hammer and I smashed his little head. <laughs> it was a weird fucking dream. But I thought it was funny how I dreamed about a vampire after drinking Romanian water. Because Transylvania is in Romania, right? Dracula's castle? I don't know. I don't know if my brain's working today. Anyway... That's my taxi rant. I'm pretty sure that's longer than the whole vlog is. <laughs> Holy fuck, dude. What a fucking nightmare. Bro, bro, this fucking guy, this fucking guy, the fucking stairs. I was, I was like, holy fuck, that this can't be real. He fucking flew. He fucking flew. I thought the guy, I was like, is he going to get back up? Holy fuck. I literally turned around like this. Holy fuck. It was so fucking wild, dude. It was fucking insane. Holy fuck, dude. I thought I was going to die the whole fucking car ride. I was like...
I was I was honestly hoping I was like, dude, please fucking crash into something. Cause I don't want to give you stupid cocksuckers another fucking dime. Look, I just I just lost nine hundred dollar chargeback, more than this whole fucking trip cost me, and I would gladly get my fucking head caved in to not give you stupid cocksuckers the re the fucking rest of the bounce. Holy fuck, dude. What a fucking nightmare. Holy fuck. Oh, all right, guys, that's enough for one day. Uh, God fucking help me, dude. Dude, I'm fucking... Holy fuck. Holy fucking shit. Fuck this shit, dude. You see, you see, you see why, you see why you shouldn't do shit? Because I got that fucking plastic surgery four months ago. I'm doing... This is shit that happened. When you start having to do shit, there's too many... When you start involving other people, fucking taxi drivers, doctors, whatever, there's too many fucking variables for crazy shit to happen. And all it takes is one fucking nut job that that guy shouldn't be fucking driving at that age. At least in that capacity, that that car needs to be fucking fixed. That is not a safe car for a TLC company. And the guy needs to put a fucking... I could have given him the $5 fucking extra GPS mount I had in my fucking drawer to put on his fucking car so he doesn't have the phone there like a fucking goon bag. Holy... All right, guys, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. My eyes fucking hurt. I need to go. But see you guys for the next video.